Hello everyone, welcome to twitch.tv forward slash the Onyx Path, where we have gathered to play uh, The World Below, Delve and Dig, episode 4, The Temple. Uh, tonight's episode is going to be a little bit on the short side, we got a little bit of a late start, uh, that's okay, sometimes life happens and we have to adjust. Um, but we will be pressing forward with our tail. Uh, we have a little bit of stuff from last session to... Uh, resolve, which should lay us a lovely groundwork for our uh, next episode, which will be entitled Calm. We will finally be hitting a calm season at the end of this episode. Uh, give these uh, give these lovely adventurers a chance to spend some XP and do some calm rituals. Uh, but before we can get there, we have to get through uh, tonight's tale. Um, I'll be... Uh, handing things over to our players momentarily for some introductions, but beforehand, uh, I would like to remind you that if you like The World Below, uh, the next game in the um, Earthbane cycle at the gates is going to be coming to Backer Kit crowdfunding very, very shortly. If you head over to our link tree, which I've just thrown the link for that uh, into the chat. Uh, you can go over there. It's the top link on the link tree to sign up to be notified when the backer kit goes live. Uh, you do not want to miss out on this. It's going to be awesome. It's uh, At the Gates is a uh, JRPG inspired tabletop game that exists within the same sort of universe as the world below. Uh, lots of fun stuff in store for that. So definitely do not miss out on that. I uh, also want to remind you that if you missed The World Below when it was initially crowdfunding, uh, you can head over to the back kit page for that, uh, which I will throw in the chat, um, and pre-order your copy of The World Below. I believe once you do, uh, you should get access to the manuscript, which gives you access to the rules, gives you access to everything you need to run the game. It's what we're working off of right now. Um, so, uh, I would highly recommend if you're digging what you're seeing, head over there and pre-order the world below. Uh, other than that, let's dive in and, uh, meet our cast. Uh, if you could, let's kick things off with Crow. Please tell us who you are, what you do, who you're playing, your pronouns, their pronouns, and anything you would care to promote. Hi, I'm Crow. Uh, he, it, I do things. Apparently, I'm still a content creator, according to um, the person I'm working with. So um, I don't have anything to promote currently, except maybe Onyx PathCon that's coming up in a few weeks. It that's is. Yeah. Pretty much it. I'll be playing Salvo. Um, he, they, it also. And uh, Eldritch Elf was currently mourning the loss of... Uh, a helmet, a helm mask by no fault of his own. But uh, expecting the delivery of a new and improved, perhaps, version. Oh, hopefully. But until then, there's a sack over his head and um, there might be some tears. This might be a tearjerker of an episode for him. Who knows? That's fair. One one can never predict these things, but uh, when they happen, we, we can certainly bask in them. Um Next up, that brings us over to Haley. Please tell us who you are, what you do, who you're playing, uh, your pronouns, their pronouns, anything you'd like to promote. Hi, everyone. My name's Haley, also known as babe underscore blade 666 on Instagram. I'm pretty casual now, not really much to promote, basically just in this game. Um, well, and, yeah. we're, and we're much richer for it. Thank you for being here. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm playing Stropharia. And she is um, like a cleric, uh, noble healer kind of character. <laughs> um, her pronouns are she, her, and mine are she, her. And thanks for having me. Rock and roll. Thanks for being here. And uh, last but not least, uh, Kevin, if you could, please tell us uh, all of your pertinent details. Hello, I'm Kevin Zonicky, and today I'll be playing the part of I Can't Find My Character Sheet. Um, Kel Zool is your character. Kel Zool. Yeah, Kel, Kel Zool, um, who is uh, I and he are he and his and such. Um, yeah, uh, albino 
who isn't albino in this setting albino necromancer elf uh with a uh, eat the lich slash rich mentality um speaks for the dead because they cannot speak for themselves and uh guides the lost to bring good fortune to those who need it which means um death to the rich and feed people with their riches which means the well in here in terms of uh who i am and what i do game designer voice actor teacher and what do i have to promote i'm sorry to say i have to jump on the bandwagon of not a lot right now what i'm working on i can't say much about because of ndas and the website is being built for the teaching but it's not done yet so i can't link you there that's um, fair. That being said, if you contact me at kevin.r.zarnicky at gmail.com, I will give you my student indie rates instead of the big corporate rates that we are charging now. If you mention this podcast slash stream slash whatever you do with it. Some of you just listen to this. And yeah, I just don't bring up you. the world below. That's all you got to do. Yeah. Bring it up. Bring up the world below. I actually love that. Mention this incredible new game, partly written by my good friend Travis here. And I will give you consistently lower rates as we get you into game design or writing your book or voice acting or all three. If I can do it, so can you. I'm not special. Not like that anyway. Not in any way I'd wish on somebody I care about. I care about you. That's very sweet and kind so there you of, go. of you to, to offer. And thank you so much for, for being here. Uh, we should have, uh, we should start a tradition on the channel where we burn NDAs when we can start talking about things. Oh my um, god, that'd be nice. <laughs> like Seven. I can tell you I'm working on Voltron, but I already told you that I'm working on Voltron in a previous episode. And you know, the irony is I'm not that into Voltron, if I'm being perfectly honest. So I can't sure. be this passionate. It's gonna be the best thing. No, it's gonna be a cool RPG. That's dope. Very what dope. do you want? Well, speaking of cool RPGs, let's dive in. Uh when last we met, our adventurers had uh, made their way into a chasm, I guess, right? Like uh, 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 a cavern, I guess would be a more accurate description. Um, having run away from a, a, a nest of very nasty vermin, they ran directly into the path of uh, three rust knights. Uh, after a dangerous and deadly battle, they were able to destroy the Rust Knights and claim their weapons. Uh, but the group had a little bit of, it didn't come, you know, without a cost. There was, there was some trouble. There were some injuries. There were some difficulties. There was a lost heirloom. Um, much as it does, the world below had took its tax for the character's success. However, there's also a, a, bright light or at least a dim light at the end of uh, the tunnel both figuratively and literally as once you've cleared that cavern you discovered a tunnel that leads downward according to maps you discovered downward to what might have at one point been a temple of the lords and ladies of rot we're going to assume that you and your team have made your way or begun to make your way down that pathway. The journey is about two hours or so on foot. It's the tunnel itself uh, is precarious. It appears to have been dug out possibly by the actual axes of the um, Rust Knights that you faced, rather than any uh, proper tools. Uh, the stone is not, and earth are not reinforced in any way, and in fact, are falling upon you a little bit in, in small little drops and driplets as you make your way through the tunnel. But keeping up a reasonable pace, you are able to make your way to the end of this makeshift thoroughfare where you arrive at a rather large cavern uh, looking around the cavern it is very clear uh, you can see the presence of sunflies there are they're sparsely dispersed throughout but there are enough of them to dimly light uh, the inside of this cavern 
at least the near portion of it. You see various ruins. Uh, looks like worked stone of some sort uh, that have been neglected and crumbling for ages. You can also clearly hear that river that has run alongside your journey for some time now, uh, still passing through this area, giving you a source of running water. I would like each of you... Uh, well, I guess first off, as you see this large cavern before you, uh, is there anything that you would like to do? Anything you would like to check out? Anything you would like to attempt? Um... I mean, this is this is based off of the map that we found on that insane loot roll, right? Correct. Yes. The um, the indication that you had that it was a temple of the of the Vrat was from the journal left behind and the pieces of corpse that you that you identified, um, and it seemed as though that person was guiding their group to this temple. Uh, surreptitiously, they were not being honest and forthright with their plan. Uh, they seemed to be servants of the Vrat and had hoped to, uh, from what you could gather, seemed like they had hoped to possibly feed their traveling companions to whatever was in this temple um, or otherwise sacrifice them in, in uh, supplication to the lords and ladies of Vrat. Hmm. But the only indication you had is that this area was once a temple, according to the journal. Right. So there's a... a we I think we came to the conclusion, or at least the suspicion, that this place is was of uh, interest to the Rust Knights and the... I can't remember the name of the Miasma. Cannibal Cloud thing. Miasma. Yeah. Um, cannibal Cloud, though. i got to remember that for something. Um so this place was probably of some interest to them. So this place is probably of interest to the lords and ladies of Rot or the Vrat. At least their followers, yeah. Uh, right. you, you know that the Rust Knights are servants of the Vrat and the Miasmil are fanatical worshippers of the Vrat. Uh, the two do not generally like one another. And what you were able to piece together uh, in your investigations last time was that they likely were engaged in... Um, combat in that uh, chamber that you had wandered into that was probably probably what had happened was the Ross Knights fought until the miasma was destroyed and then went dormant until you arrived and uh what's good what's good for the Vrat is bad for us so investigating their interest in this place and potentially uh, diminishing its ability to serve as a staging point or breeding ground or whatever it is these insane charnel lords do. Taking this place out would be good for wherever we're going to take our rest, right? Uh, could be, yeah. Um, it's also possible, uh, you know, that like right now, looking at the place, it's very clear to you that it is uh, ruined and damaged. It has both of those area effects. What Ruined does is makes it harder for you to get, garner clues and in investigation because there's so much detritus laying around. Uh, whereas uh, the, uh, what did I say, uh, destroyed condition, um, that actually makes it more difficult for you to, or demolished, I apologize, is the name of the condition, uh, which makes it more difficult for you to actually move hastily through the area. Um, there's broken remnants of buildings of, of clearly pieces that were once architecture um, as well as just chunks of cavern ceiling uh, sort of strewn about the joint. Um, it is not in great shape. Does anybody have any ideas about uh, methods of investigation, scout perception that they can do? Uh, I can scout ahead uh, sure uh what skill would you like to uh rely on to try to sort of identify what's going on in this area um i 
oddly enough, probably if we can't really suss out like the mystery of this place, uh, I'm going to try to use some science and try to uh, track where like most of the growth, most of, most of where the, uh, where the rot is. Sure. Um, concentrated at. Go ahead and give me a, let's do science intellect. Yeah. And let's do that uh, because it is uh, ruined. That's going to be a moderate complication. Your difficulty on this roll is going to be two and you're going to have a moderate complication. So if you uh, do not buy off that complication, uh, you will not be able to use evidence as enhancement toward finding your next lead. Uh, and, and you may find false information as well. Or uncover more than you were bargaining for. Uh, what was the comp How much I needed for the complication? So difficulty is two, complication is two. So uh, four would get you clear of everything. Okay. Uh, got a three. Three hits. Excellent. Um, as you're looking around through the area, you come to the conclusion that like there is fungal growth here. Um, looks like some of these fungi are edible and others are luminescent. As far as you know, that means that any immediate direct influence that the Vrat may have had um, is not is no longer active in the area. Okay. However, as you're following one of these patterns along, uh, you sort of stumble a bit on a piece of stone. Uh, and that piece of stone sort of rolls down uh, a pile, stopping just short of falling into the water. And as it does, uh, you're greeted by a horrifying visage. Uh, for a moment, this startles you until you realize that this is not, in fact, a living being, but uh, a icon of some sort, a statue. What's horrifying about it? The features are twisted into a, a bizarre arrangement that is uh, frightening even to the... Uh, frankly, cosmopolitan appearances among you. Uh, everything about it seems off. Uh, it seems to to reek of, of, of rot itself. Furthermore, uh, as you've cleared it away, you notice the telltale glow emanating from this icon to indicate that it is, in fact, uh, a calcified chaos uh, that this was carved from. So perhaps a large chaos stone uh, or, or possibly even something that had compressed the chaos into this shape. Hmm. While you're doing that, uh, what would Kelzul like to be doing throughout this area? Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, can I detect any undead, like any spirits in the area, ghosts, like... No. To um, quote Sin City, have people died here? Do you have any power that en that enables you to see them, or are you just going to rely on like esoterica to get an idea of 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 symptoms of of, of spiritual presence? Well, I have syntheses for corpse whisper, ghost eyes, and trove revealed. Um, ghost eyes sounds like see ghosts, but it also seems to be a once once procession speak with spirits at, at uh, neutral disposition. I'm not sure if that's all inclusive, but I didn't see anything that specifically said you, I see dead people, you know? So sure. Um, Otherwise I can always like try to look so for remains. It says you area. can, you can just, uh, when you investigate the encroaching darkness tunnels, you can see the lingering dead's movements. So uh, you will see if there are ghosts present. Cool. Um, why don't you go ahead and give me uh, your, choice of uh, esoterica, enigmas, or culture as you're looking the area over. Esoterica with intellect, if please. Yeah, absolutely. You also have 
the uh, difficulty of two and the complication, the moderate complication, uh, due to the area being uh, ruined. But the good news is, this is where I have a five and a five. So this is about as good as dice get. Excellent. One, two, three, four hits. Beautiful. Um, that is enough to resolve the complication and to uh, gather some knowledge. As you're looking through, uh, you suspect, in fact, that part of the reason that there are no spirits lingering here is these icons of the Vrat very likely uh, are warding them off. Um, not not in the sense of mystically preventing their uh, arrival, but just it's not pleasant for them. They don't sure. want to be by it. Um, you do note uh, that, like, you can spot the the twinkle of chaotic illumination in a few different spots. You count probably a total, uh, including the one that your your companion is, is unearthed, of four of these icons. They're not arranged in any particular occult fashion that would act as, say, a prison or a, a, a matrix of power or containment zone warding thread they something. seem to be set up to maximize the priest's ability to channel chaos for their holy holy uh arts and this is specific to that tradition or would that work for any chaos mancer uh, anybody using chaos could draw on these um if you position yourself in the right place if you were to clean this area up and position yourself properly with the icons intact where they are, you would be able to claim some enhancement if you in the right spot. Uh, alternatively, uh, the icons are made of chaos rock. You could literally consume them to fuel chaos as well. Uh, that would be a temporary boost, uh, but a, a significant one. Um, the other Imagine thing. Imagine if Cal was here. Right? Uh, be eating the walls like rock candy. Well, and that does bring us to what our uh, good friend Bunga and M are going to do. Uh, the two of them, uh, because you can really only see, uh, based on the illumination, about halfway. Uh, well, you can, you can see a, a distance into here and then everything is blackness. Um, so M and Bunga are going to sort of explore the back end of the cavern and see what they can see. Uh, your um, Smith companion and her nieces are going to sort of post up right next to the uh, cavern entrance, ready to beat feet in the event that something goes horrendously wrong. Um, the other thing that all three of you notice without the need for a roll is once you're inside this cavern, there appears to be, uh, at one time, there was a double door. Uh, this double door's height seems to exceed the height of the borne out tunnel uh, by probably three or four meters. Um, the doors themselves seem to have been crafted from some sort of refined mineral, some sort of a metal. Um, and while they are not attached to the door frame at this point, uh, they seem to be intact. A little bit beaten up, a little bit dented, but conceivably repairable. And then whilst the others are looking for their various things, uh, what is our uh, our lovely mushroom person doing? You might go collect some mushrooms. You said some of them are edible. <laughs> yes, uh, some of them are in fact All edible. <laughs> Uh, so Strafiri is going to do a little bit of a uh, little bit of farming, a little bit of uh, foraging. Excellent. I'm going to offer it to people and that are. What would you like on their tasks? What would you like to <laughs> rely on to forage? Would this be uh, like a survival roll that you'd be making? Would it be? Um, let's see I, what else you got. Uh, I would say maybe athletics for moving around through the area. Maybe medicine. Medicine or... to recognize the the most healthful. I got yeah. I have a good medicine roll. Right. Yeah. Go ahead and give me a medicine uh, intellect roll, please. And you again will be suffering from the uh, difficulty of two, the complication of two. Okay. Makes uh... the place being ruined. Okay. Um, 
Eights and higher? Eights and higher, yep. And tens count as two. Three. All right, excellent. Uh, the good news is you are able to clearly identify uh, almost immediately um, what amounts to a treasure trove worth of edible and medicinal fungus. Uh, your group here could perhaps survive indefinitely here based on the amount of fungus. Uh, okay. It would be sufficient to support at least a small settlement if remotely well cultivated. Can I ask the mushrooms if there's any other life forms among us? Um, yeah, they uh, they indicate in the positive. Um, and in fact, they're coming right now as you pull a handful of edible uh, mushroom and the earth beneath it starts to bubble like royal like 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 a boiling pot uh, and then maggots just start spewing forth uh, out of the ground uh, they're probably about this long or so but otherwise appear fairly mundane uh, that does not, however, prevent them from starting to uh, swarm directly at you. So since that's the case, uh, and the three of you are all relatively close by, the others have sort of um, gone deeper in to investigate, uh, let's go ahead and have you give us an initiative roll. Um, and give me just a second to bring up our... Uh, various systems that we need. All right. So for initiative, you will roll the higher of your athletics plus cunning or empathy plus dexterity. So what plus cunning? Athletics A plus cunning or or empathy, empathy plus, plus dex. dex. Yeah. Okay. And if somebody could ping the Zoom chat, I would greatly appreciate it because that should bring it up in my interface. Many many thanks. Uh, do tens still count for double? Tens still do count for two. <laughs> Bitchin. Let's see here. Oh my goodness. So our uh, our maggots boiling up out of the ground a standard precursor to the arrival of a uh, lord or lady of rot. No, not at all. Uh, you're you're assuming that um, if this was to announce the arrival of the rat, it wouldn't be maggots. It would be rust knights pouring out of this hole. You know, fair enough. Uh, you know, this fair is fair enough. This, unless we already killed those rust knights. Oh, valid. Uh, but this is more likely uh, just some vermin that have taken advantage of 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 dying organic material. Yippee. Um, did you have a question, Haley? I'm sorry. Uh, that's okay. I was trying to pick the mushrooms to gain momentum, but maybe I'll do that after. Oh, if you, uh, it, does, does that, uh, fulfill one of your momentum generators? Um, feed the hungry, but I don't think I fed anyone yet. I was just kind of picking them. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. You're in process of you, feeding the hungry. It's... Well, you currently do have four momentum, so you're in good shape. Uh, the okay. first... Action will, of course, go to our um, uh, to Kael Zul as you sort of can clearly see uh, Straferia sort of reel back as these bugs just start boiling out of the ground. What would you like to do? Um, I'm going to try out this Rust Knight axe that I got. Um, uh, I'm going to use my uh, animate minion on it. Okay. Uh, that probably takes like my whole action just animating it, right? It does, I believe. My plan is to make it float around and just broadside of the blade, just start slapping them like it's a spatula. 
And it's craft animated minion, correct? Yes. All right. So uh, what I will need you to do is give me a uh, Enigma's intellect. I wish I could use Esoterica instead of Enigma's. All right. Uh, seven then. That is fine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's two hits. Okay. Excellent. Um, that is enough to activate it. It is not enough to pay for the complication uh, that is generated by the chaos level in the area. So on the bright side, you have now animated the axe, and the axe is uh, beginning its its movement, at the very least, toward uh, your ally. I picture this thing having a very Elden Ring aesthetic. Does that feel... That's fair, yeah. Does it's, it feel it, right? It, that's like overly opulent and just carved of one big-ass piece of rust? Uh, kind of, sort of, yeah. yeah. Probably extra markings on it, but also, like, irregular and chipped and 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 yeah. flaking in some in some levels um good clean fun yes so and that i believe your how many dots do you have in in uh craft animated menu oh um it's at value two Okay, excellent. So you will be treating this as a, I believe, a base level creature. So let me get you the stats for that real quick. Danke. I believe you use the pest template. After know, after level. game, uh, we can just you can send me those, and I'll just like I can slap them on real easy for you with a reference sheet. Sure, they're um, I've got them from the last time you summoned something. There you go. All right. Uh, however, uh, because you were unable to overcome the chaos level, you will also be uh, the proud owner of a chaotic retaliation. Oh, I don't know what that means, but it sounds bad. So, catacritic retaliations are chaos this paradox. It's similar, yeah. If you if you're familiar with Mage the Ascension, it's similar to paradox. It's chaos rebounding against the effect that you have done. It's it's the equal and opposite uh, reaction, though. Not always, not always those things. Uh, fortunately, because you got one six or one hit to work toward the complication, you have uh, staged it down to a minor chaotic retaliation. Uh, but if you could go ahead and uh, roll two ten sided dice for me, please. This app really needs a clear all dice button. Oh, oh that wasn't good. I rolled a one and a two. Excellent. Um, <laughs> the, a Travis excellent is not an excellent uh, as the axe sort of rises and uh, the handle splits to make makeshift legs it starts stumbling its way toward uh, its, its assigned target the, with the first couple of steps cause the entirety of the cavern to start to rumble um all characters within medium range of you suffer a plus one difficulty to their physical actions. Uh, Sorry, everybody. That's all right. It's only until the end of your next turn. Um, as some of the rocks are rolled loose, uh, ground shifts a little bit, but it's not quite enough to take anyone off their feet. And it certainly doesn't seem to be bothering your minion any. Um, fortunately for you, the... Uh, uh, any minions you animate are considered stable, so they're very hard to knock off their feet. That, however, uh, brings us down to the next stage, which is the grubs themselves. Uh, as they are closest to Strafiria, they are going to attempt uh, to snatch... Well, snatch your leg, basically. Get a hold of your feet. That's what they're aiming for. Um... So for them to do this, 
they will make their attack roll. Now you may attempt to defend as well. I have a, um, my staff has blocking. Would that help in this? Excellent. So the blocking tag? Yeah. So this would allow you to effectively use it as a shield. I think that should be the shield tag, not the blocking tag. I don't believe blocking is attack. Um, so you can uh, use it as light cover if you if you uh, would like to. Okay. Um, do you Which, have? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to ask if you have any other armor, any other sort of defensive that was action my... that you would like to take? Uh, not really. I just have the shield. <laughs> That's and fair. I, roll, I guess. Do I roll for this? No, that just gives you uh, what's basically uh, considered a uh, light cover. Okay. So... Uh, your starting defense against the attack is always one. Uh, you may take a defensive action using your stamina alone uh, to okay. add to your defense. So I roll my stamina then? Correct. Oh, okay. I haven't been attacked yet. Oh, a 10. Two. So that's two hits? Excellent. So uh, your base defense is one. You make your stamina roll. That adds to your defense. Uh, so that then becomes uh, three because you got two hits, right? Mm -hmm. So that is the difficulty that they have for hitting you. Make sense? Yep. So if you have light cover, uh, what this does is it, it can absorb up to four damage before being destroyed. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. So okay. uh, you've got that going for you. However, uh, the grubs are not entirely interested in, in damaging or destroying your cover. In fact, uh, what they're doing instead is they're going to um, try to get on you uh, and sort of start working their way, not only up your staff and into your hands, but into your flesh itself. <laughs> Fortunately... Uh, you they only got three hits to try to grab you so you are able to sort of uh, step backward but um, you because all physical actions right now are suffering a plus one difficulty uh, they pretty much they cancel one another out uh, but you are having a very you're very precariously standing right now the ground is uneven and you are acutely aware of the fact that the ground is uneven uh, that reminds me of the mummy when like all the little bugs came. And, like, yeah, the, the scarab beetles. Uh, yeah. The scar yeah, the first few. <laughs> I still don't get why it didn't leave a trail of bruises underneath. That, that That's not how skin works. But anyway. Because uh, they didn't have the effects budget. They wanted to keep the rating down. Right, that too. Um, <laughs> so if that, if I don't miss my mark, then that will bring us around uh to Crow's character, uh, what, what would you like to do seeing this unfold? Um, did Staphoria go in that moment? Uh, that was just defense roll? That was just defense. Staphoria did not act yet. Because since we're both at two, uh, she can go first since she's okay. dealing with since that. She's directly there? Yeah. That's totally fine. Sperry, what would you like to do? Let's get him. 
<laughs> That's your plan, Ray. Get her. All right. Get her done. <laughs> I'm gonna attack with my spear or my knife, not spear. My staff. Your staff. All right. Uh, does hey, the... you, you tie a knife to it; it becomes a spear. It's... Does the staff go. have a listed um, dream enhancement? I'm sorry. Dreamcrafted. Okay, dreamcrafted. Uh, does does it list any specific enhancement? No. Okay. Just looking to see what that will do for you. So, uh, you can, when you hit someone with it for two hits, you can inflict the exhausted status effect. For three hits, you can inflict the liquefied status effect on the target. Yeah. And uh, for two plus hits, you can inflict senses occluded. On the target. That's what Dreamcrafted allows you to do. So in that case, uh, we will assume the base enhancement is going to give you a plus one. Uh, nice. But again, all physical actions, including attacks, have a difficulty of plus one due to uh, the tremors, thanks to the chaotic retaliation. So um, go ahead and give me your close combat. Uh, I would assume you're going to lean on might. Yeah, sure. All right. Can I just? Oh, yeah, let's do mine. Well, did you have something else in, in mind? My stamina is a little better than might, but I, I'll do might. Yeah, stamina would be a little bit of a hard sell, I think. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, go ahead and give that a shot. Your difficulty for this attack is two. Uh, two nines and a ten. Awesome. So that's four hits plus the one enhancement, which is canceled out by. Well, it's plus, yeah, so it's five hits total. Uh, excellent. You're going against two hits that it's resisting, so that leaves you three. So uh, you could choose to deal damage and uh, inflict the exhausted status effect on the target. You could, or you could do one damage and uh, deal the senses occluded status effect. Or you could deal no damage, but cause them to become liquefied. Does liquefied just, like, end them? Not at all. Um, okay. <laughs> when a creature has the liquefied status effect, uh, the body becomes viscous fluid. While in the state, they have two durability advantage against incoming attacks, but uh, they cannot initiate attacks other than close combat. When using close combat while liquefied, a character can only purchase the knockdown trip combat trick. Uh, even universal combat tricks are denied to them. Uh, so basically, you turn them into a sentient puddle. Ah. Sort of melting them into dream goo for a time. Goop. Um, all right, let's exhaust them so that maybe they lose interest. They're too tired. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so you're going to impose the exhausted status effect on them? Mm hmm Let's just double check here and see what that does to our fun our fun little bugs. Um, this will cause a moderate complication on all actions until they rest. Failure to buy off the complication results in the character hallucinating, uh, experiencing short-term memory loss, or being affected by another appropriate status effect. Uh, antagonists suffering this cannot activate more than one antithesis uh, the following round if they fail. Right. So, they are exhausted. And that then brings us around to Savo. What you got? Hmm. Uh, how many of these maggots are... Um... <laughs> Filling out the hole. Uh, it's enough to qualify as a swarm. Oh. Yeah, it's uh, far more than you can count. I hate that. Um, <laughs> um, it currently I... looks like it's probably enough to uh, cover your, your, your dear traveling companion from head to toe. Oh, well, God. <laughs> this is my nightmare. <laughs> Um, I am uh, Eldritch missling uh, that hole. 
that they are swarming out of and um, uh, um, cleansing this place in chaos. Chaos and whatever I can possibly muster. All right, so we're looking at a um, Eldritch Missile, you said? Yep. I think that's range, combat, and dexterity. Yes. Uh, so uh, you'll be looking at range, combat, and dexterity. Uh, you have imbued a piece of ammunition with a cocktail of elemental qualities. Um, if you deal one injury with the ammunition, the uh, overstimulating area effect will afflict the swarm. FYI, it will also affect Strafaria. Like, she's close enough that that's going to affect her as well. Hmm. What does a five get me? Five hits? Five hits. Well, I mean, you overcome the difficulty of two to hit them. Mm -hmm. That is enough for you to uh, deal them an injury. Yep. And you would inflict the uh, status effect. So that's four. So you have one more hit. Uh, you could spend additional hits to purchase uh, ranged combat tricks, or you could... Uh, You don't have quite enough to kick it up a degree of power advantage. Mm, nor fine. to brand the swarm, unfortunately. Uh, um, kind of let me look up some ranged combat tricks and see what you can do yeah, uh, with that do one that. success. You know, it's fine if uh, Deforia can't see this. Mm. I mean, I, she probably doesn't want to see this at this present moment. <laughs> yeah, it's fair. That's fair enough. I don't want to see it, and I have a bag over my head. <laughs> uh, so as this hits, uh, Strafaria, you and the um, the maggots, the grubs, the these uh, vermin are just completely like overwhelmed by uh, bright flashes of light and loud whistling. Uh, this clearly has drawn the attention of anything in the cavern would be aware of your presence at this point. Uh, and you do hear a, uh, you do hear an echoing call from the other end of the cavern. Are you all all right over there, over there, over there, over there? From, from M. Um, ew, 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 <laughs> ew, ew, ew. <laughs> uh, so you could apply uh, the, the uh, pin down. At, Perfect. At one to apply a mi minor complication uh, to the bug's next action. Yes, that's perfect. All right, so they are overstimulated and uh, pinned down and exhausted. Good oh, lord! Exactly how we feel. Yeah, they're not having a good. They're not having a good. This they're going to have a bad time. All right. Um, that brings us back around to the top of the order. Uh, your, if you'd like, your axe can go first. And then you can act, or vice versa. It's up to you. Oh, yeah. Puppet smack. All right. That's uh, how we do. Go ahead and give it that attack roll with the um, with the pest template. So that is... Which thing do I roll? Uh, it would be the primary pool of the pest tem template. Primary. Oh, okay. There it's we go. built for fighting. Three, four, five, Ooh. six. <sighs> Not a one. Not a one. Nay, nay, nay. Um, you <laughs> swing forth. Uh, the good news is you gain a momentum. Do you Huzzah. want to spend any of, of the momentum on re-rolling failed dice? Uh, or I guess, I, I forgive me, we're playing ultra. Uh, would you like to spend the momentum to turn uh, the simple failure into a success at a cost? Nah. Okay. I, I feel like uh, momentum might be something we can cash in later in a big way right uh These the, are gross they're they are just maggots though as far as i know valid uh the axe comes down and while it misses uh any that fails to do any significant damage to the swarm uh you do like dig up a chunk of earth as the axe stands back up and it becomes very clear to you uh Strafaria, despite the uh sort of difficulty you're having in, in perceiving the area because of all this uh, 
you know, noise going on around you and flashing light. Uh, it does look like very, very rich, farmable earth that flies up uh, as the axe pulls itself clear. <laughs> for, for a failed role, I feel like that was a pretty cool discovery. Yeah, that, that's I'm, your, I'm not unhappy with this failure. That's, that's your con, cool that, that's your consolation for the failure. Um, I, that's a good one. I mean, look, if there's formable earth here and these chaos stones, all we have to do is realign it to something positive, and we've got a very habitable zone. That is all true, and all provided that you survive this attack. Fortunately for you, uh, the grubs have seen better days. Unfortunately for you, it is still their action. Um, they are going to actually uh they're going to discorporate as a response to the axe blow they're going to spread out and just start digging their way back into the earth mm. good <laughs> that's not good <laughs> go uh, back where you belong the immediate threat has passed the tremors stopped you hear a little bit of ongoing uh fighting on the far end of the cavern, and M shouts, Did you all find some grubs, too? <laughs> oh, boy. <Are> we... <laughs> now, a uh, question. Um, maggots suggests a larval form of something bigger. Right, yes. Um, I'm friends with enough entomologists, thank you, Shadowrun Research, that I, uh, you can identify a species, if you have that knowledge, to figure out from looking at a grub, what it's going to grow up to be. Sure. Does anybody have a skill where they could identify what these things grow into? Because if this is, I'm, I'm playing into my union of cartographers uh, guild. If this is like a, an attractive habitable zone, then we should probably know what's growing under your feet. Sure. That's fair. So uh, can we make... Um, Science this, uh, or science? medicine uh, probably would be fine. Oh, Either one. Know. Okay. You may go. Um, um, the area is still considered ruined, so you still have a, a moderate complication. So your difficulty would be one, and your complication two. Medicine and intelligence. Intellect would be yeah, probably. Okay, so let's do this. ten, nine, and eight. All right, so that's four. So that's enough to buy off complication and ten, get, ten, get difficulty. And eight. Excellent. That's five. So that's an exceptional. And then uh, what did we get? Two tens and an eight. Awesome. Yeah. So it's very clear to you all uh, the origin of, of these of these maggots, these little grubs. Um, they are. Do 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 do. Sorry. Gotta dig my way down to the proper page. You actually doot doot in perfect time with my '80s playlist. That was awesome. Nice. It's it's a it's a skill. What can I say? <laughs> These are what are commonly known as uh, razor wings. They are a um, flying pest that the this specific breed of them are akin to uh locusts however they tend to have a similar effect to livestock that locusts have to um uh to farmable goods uh to crops oh so they'll like pick the flesh off of uh, animals that are raised for food and things like that. They usually, once they're matured, they usually won't attack people um, unless they're starving. Is there a way to put them down or put them to use in a cavern? Or, or what do you call a settlement? A settlement. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, uh, uh, they are edible. They are farmable. Uh, they can be harvested. Uh, you know, given that there were like 15 hits between the lot of you. Uh, you all know at least one method of baiting them, trapping them, uh, and harvesting them for, for their protein. So this isn't um, a deal breaker. This is like just an asset that requires taming. Right. Yeah. Take a little work, but, you know. Um, 
I mean, not, there better be the something apocalypse. so horrible we run screaming from this temple because this place is just looking more and more like <laughs> <laughs> one hell of a fine. Like, I mean, hey, there's there's free grub. Uh, there, you know, there's there's good soil. There's mushrooms. There's chaos stones that liches don't have yet. This is this is prime stuff. You have a clean uh, potable water source. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, since I'm since I'm in that mindset, like. How does this cavern look stability wise? Uh, stability itself, place looks fine. Near as you can tell, there's no structural danger. Um, your biggest issues right now are going to be clearing up the various debris that's around here and sort of identifying its nature um, and, and just making use of making the best use of the land. Um, it looks like the soil in here, whatever lived in here has been dead long enough and rotted long enough and fed the soil long enough. That it looks like most of this soil is farmable. Um, you just got to get to it. You got to get the, the rocks and shit out of the way. Um, How defensible are the positions? Like lots of entries and exits, uh, there's, natural cul-de-sacs. Near as you can tell, there are three ways in and out. Uh, and M verifies that the back end of this. Uh, so I, I take that back. There are four ways in and out. Uh, M verifies that at the back end of the cavern, there's a crevice that if you walked in single file, you could squeeze through. Um, so that shouldn't be too hard to plug. Uh, and, and it only goes up about two meters. Um, so you have that. You have the front door that you came in through. And then you have the uh, up river and down river, which... You know, a little bit of engineering. You could build cages on either side of that to keep things from getting in. And catch fish, maybe. Right. I mean, it's very tempting to just, like, set up shop here. But I kind of want to make sure that our charge arrives where they're going. Um, Your charge uh, doesn't have a, list, a listed destination. She wants to, somewhere that she can be safe work her trade and figure out her next step. Um, okay. You, you all can also tell you are starting to get the sense uh, changes in the humidity, slight aches in your, in your joints. Calm isn't far off. You think if you, if you, if you, if you are where you think you are and you, um, tunneled rather quickly um, or went doubled back and got onto the, the um, Ferris Road. Pretty sure you could make it to the nearest small settlement before Calm hit. But you'd have to leave now and you'd have to start hurrying. Do we have the supplies necessary to make this a settlement? Yeah, the, albeit a, a small one, but uh, enough to keep you all alive during the calm. All right. Your biggest concerns at this point would be plugging that front door, uh, plugging the I'm, rear door, uh, you know, and then handling the various. I'm, uh, I'm going to have to step away physically in just a second, for sure. just a minute. But I want to throw this idea out for debate for the group. What if we made it a point to settle this area? Like, we'll open up a trade route, bring more people in to, like, establish an actual settlement and stuff. Do we want to, like, settle this, or do we just want to, like, make a good map and, like, come back to this after the next call? Mm. So I'll be back, but just something to chew over. Yeah? Right. Okay. Okay. Be right back. Sure. Uh, well... Kevin's handling what Kevin's handling. Uh, was there any questions or things that Strafiri wanted to uh, investigate, wanted to look at? Mm. For now, I just I want to cook a meal <laughs> right. with the dead grubs and they're safe, right? The dead grubs are safe to eat. The, <laughs> the fungus that you've uh, harvested is safe to eat. Yeah. Uh, you're absolutely... Uh, able to do so 
um i think at that moment um it's kind of like a dungeon meshy situation where uh uh Safo is just kind of looking over uh Streff's shoulder and just going yeah, well, you're you're not cooking the bugs right you're, the the grub worms like we're not eating those right well, I was actually going to offer it to you. I do feel really bad not protecting you enough from the last battle. By, like, poisoning me with maggots? Like, that just kind of feels like, oh! These are he... not poisonous. These are, will keep your strength up. Huh. It just kind of feels like passive-aggressive being angry and upset with me like I didn't protect you enough so here's grubs do better like that's that that's kind of how it just feels this is the best I can do for now once we're back into an actual civilization you'll get a proper meal from me okay like I normally don't you know I'm not a beggar or fussy eater but like and he just kind of takes one of the arrows and just pokes at like one of the grubs. Hmm. All right. <laughs> Athlana says that is like cheers. <laughs> She'll like eat one too. Athlana walks over and says that is good protein. Picks one up and pops it in her mouth. Uh, so there's nothing to complain about here. And then she hands you your uh, mask. <gasps> he just looks at it. And there's like a slight reverence, um, a death whistle whistle noise that you don't know if that's like from him or from like whatever's under the bag or like what that's all about. And just like without even like you seeing him take off the bag, like the mask is already on and like the bag has already like been put away. And uh, she says, uh, do you find it sufficient? This fits right. Perfect. And it, it should. He's like, wait, wait. And you just watch as he like opens up the mask in like that weird uh, Eldritch Horror Beetlejuice sort of manner. Like, put something inside and then take something out. Yeah, it fits. It fits perfectly. Good, good. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, if you need any modifications, let me know. It is a bit on the reflective side. Uh, I could try to put a coating on it to to dull that if you if you wish. Uh, um, we go through enough battles for it to dull by itself. Yeah. Well, it uh, that metal will retain its shine for some time. Uh, one of the many desirable qualities about it. Um, but uh, as you said, uh, you know the food here is survivable. Um, I, over the course of the calm, I would imagine I could. Uh, create several trade goods that we could then distribute after calm to gather more resources for the settlement. I do like the idea of being a, a bit out of the way, and I certainly like the idea of there being very limited entrances to the place. Hmm. I can set up traps, that's not a problem, and set up a secret watch guard somewhere. I will make this land farmable. Start clearing the debris. All right. That's what you wish. Uh, what would you like to lean on uh, skills-wise for for adjusting the um, environment for cleaning debris, getting the place uh, set up, uh, getting the, the farmable land ready? Um, what sort of skills do you think you would uh, lean on most for that. I would say survival would be one that would be likely. Technology might come into play. Science could come into play. Um, I got leadership and survival. Survival would be good. Um, yeah, survival would be very good because you'll know like kind of what needs to be moved, what is best left where it's sitting right now, that sort of thing. Um, so why don't you give me a Let's do a survival and probably stamina. This is going to be a lot more about working tirelessly than it is about 
smarts. It's not terribly complicated. <laughs> it's more it's more just labor. Rock. I got a ten and a nine. All right, excellent. That's three hits. It's not too bad. Um, how about for uh, how about for uh, Savo? What would you like to uh, gonna lean on my technology if I can? Sure. Um, are you relying on uh, muscle power or are you relying on tenacity more? Would this be more of a might technology or more of a stamina technology? Um, stamina technology. All right, let's do it. At two tens. Excellent. Four hits. Not bad. Uh, that is more than enough to uh, sort of, you know, place levers and fulcrums where they belong and, and get things moving. Uh, over the course of the next couple of days, you're able to clear out the debris, uh, separate it into sort of this rock is useful for building things. This rock over here is decorative. <laughs> uh, you're also able to um, excavate and adjust the placement, if you desire, of the Vrat icons. Uh, they have been knocked down, but are otherwise basically where they need to be geometrically to have uh, positive chaotic effects. Um, would you want to stand them up? Would you want to adjust their positioning? Would you want to break them down into raw chaos rock? Um, do you have a preference about how they're handled? Um, probably slightly stand them up, kind of camouflage them so they can still be used and not so much tampered with. Uh, my biggest fear, one of my biggest fears, like. Bunga coming through and then Hulk smashing through some of this stuff uh, for shinies. So it was just like child proofing these things. <laughs> sure, sure. Make sure there's stuff that we can be used later. Especially Fair in emergency. In. Yeah. You, that's your task. She's not going to go through doing that. <laughs> that's fair. Um, what are your plans for uh the other entries the main door uh althea and uh her nieces will work on reforging um they're gonna basically create hinges out of uh her metal and then just replace the doors uh they'll probably need to lean on you all for help in moving them because they're just freaking heavy um but uh as far as the actual repair work the doors that's done on their end. Uh, but you got four hits on your technology roll. So would you, um, I'll say in addition to uh, debris clearing and adjusting the, the icon stones, I'll, that will be sufficient to complete two other tasks. Uh, those tasks might be setting up fishing traps in the river, uh, blocking off the back door, or creating something else in that area out of the materials that are present. So what two, two tasks would you like to do with those? Um, I am making sure, first, I'm blocking off holes that anything that is unwarranted uh, cannot get through. I, like, I want to make sure like we're not getting ambushed by like an army of like Swiss knife, army knife rodents or some weird shit like sure. that. Sure. The big one is the is the crevasse in the back end, um, yeah. which you're able to cover up uh, relatively easily. In fact, you're uh, able to use a sheet of the of uh, of the uh, Smith's metal to cover that pretty much with no problems. Uh, you can anchor it very easily with some of the larger rocks that you've cleared. No problem there. Uh, that leaves you one other project uh, that you could you can accomplish. Let's see. We have water. We have mushroom. We have gr oh, we have grubs. I hate it here. <laughs> Just okay. 
we'll get fish. I'll I'll get us some fish, and he's setting up some fish traps. All right. So you uh, set up the fish trap. Uh, are you going to use that re- last remaining hit to set up one uh, at the upstream entrance, which is the one you came that you would have that went from the cavern you were just in, or the downstream at the far end of the cavern? Hmm. I should believe. This is going to be a crazy question. Um, where is the closest for like, um, where like the most mushrooms are growing, like the most plant life? Is that upstream or downstream? Uh, probably upstream. Uh, it is probably more fertile uh, as, as you're upstream. As you get downstream, it's not so much the land is less fertile downstream. It's just that there's more garbage to clear uh, to get to it. That that's kind of um a little bit closer downstream, not all the way there, but just a little bit closer to the strap pad. So right before you have to do a bunch of cleaning, um, he's just not trying to gunk up or pollute where all that farmland water is. Good call. Good call. So uh just to recap, especially because Kevin just came back, uh the Thank current you. current state of the settlement. Uh, we have. So we did decide to stick around. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, so we have cleared away most of the rock in the uh, I'm going to call it the skyward uh, section because it does lead slightly uh up you've been sort of descending at a gentle slope the entire time since you've left uh telver's hearth so we're the, the hell making maps for this game because everything's three-dimensional yeah <laughs> exactly yes um now you know the pain of the cartographers and stratographers um <sighs> so you clear away most of the rock on the uh, skyward side you have uh prepared the farmland under the cleared rock. You have uh, repaired and placed the doors on the skyward entrance. You have uh, added a plate of why can't I remember the name of the magical metal? One second. Of uh, Labrant over the uh, crevice in the voidward side. And you have built fish trap near the downstream entrance, I guess. All right. So this is like the first couple of days of labor as you're getting the settlement prepared. Oh, and um, making sure the what is it, the chaos stuff stable or upright. Right. Yes. You. That's right. Uh, that was the other thing. We've uh, stood up the uh, icons, and we're realigning the horror faces to not be there. Uh, that's all you. I kind of figured you would probably want to do something about that. I just made sure that it's stable and Bunga can't just charge on through it and make pretty chaos rocks. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, um, yeah. There are there are two things, one salient to that point and one not that I'd like to do. Sure. Uh, one, <clears throat> for the sake of my uh, necromancer nonsense, uh, can I like try to re-engage with the spirits of the area and try to cultivate a, this is a place for friendly ghosts to be cool? Um, sure. Um, you want to... Uh... What, what, what would you like to lean on to do so? Are you uh, 
Um, is there any sort of ritual you would perform or any sort of actions you would take to try oh. to make this into a more inviting place for the spirits of, 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 of the restless dead? From a uh, rules perspective, mm -hmm. um, I've got uh, patron local spirits. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of a favor to patron to cultivate that region. Okay. Excellent. Um, Perfect. There's uh, bone reader, corpse whisper, ghost eyes, and a ghost aligned trove revealed, which I might as well use for this session. So I'll do that too. Um, sure. And I'll use ghost eyes to speak with local spirits and start with a neutral disposition. Um, and if I do find any remains, I mean, Bone Reader might help me get more insight into them. So that's uh, on a statistical level what I'll do. The closest thing to remains you're going to find here is the grubs that you all are now dining upon. Um, yeah. nothing, yeah. Re no, re nothing real informative about those. Um, well, un unlike uh, Pirate Baby Cabana Battle ultimate version i do not have access to the ghosts of 10 billion mosquitoes so that's fine <laughs> um that's a real thing by the way you can look that up on youtube it's amazing so as you are using control revealed and you're looking around to see what uh might remain here you find half buried in the dirt underneath a rather large rock near the uh, voidward side of the cavern. Um, you find what appears to be a collection of tablets. Uh, these tablets have been damaged. They've seen better days. Um, and we all you may be able to reconstruct them you're not sure there are sort of components of them laying about uh rebuilding them may be uh a task for uh you calm. know a calm uh but uh i would let you make a esoterica or artistry role uh i like when you let me make esoterica roles i would say you'd probably want to pair this more off of cunning than intellect would be my instinct if that's what you want, then that's what I'll do. It's a one die difference. Cool, cool. Give, give her, Nine. give her a roll. Holy shit! Yes. Ten, 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 eight. Excellent. So that's seven hits. Beautiful. God damn. Uh, I'm no good in a fight, but I'll get you there out of it. Uh, what you discover in this is actually an incantation. Uh, this incantation is reported, according to the tablets, uh, to be able to open a portal uh, to one of three locations. The lip of the void, the uh, surface, and the edge of the dreamscape, the, uh, what's the specific term for the place? Uh, Obscura. So you can open, so theoretically, if you can re-piece this together again, if you can get it corrected and get all the pieces, uh, you should be able to use the, the rituals therein to draw on the chaos of this location to open a portal directly to one of those three locations. Would there be a way back? I mean, portals are two-way. Okay. For better and for worse. Okay, this place just got way more interesting. Um... Geez, that's my momentum generator too. Willingly enter the obscura. I'll actually be able to do it. Um, okay, that's really, really cool. Um, so yes, I let the others know. Um, beyond that, uh, if I can make contact with the local spirits and broker negotiations, hey, we're going to make this a friendly place, good ethereal resonance and all that. 
Sure. Um, and that, and you said, uh, aside from just having the ability to speak to them, you said you have a patron. Uh, for patron, I put local spirits. Okay. Uh, sort of a they'll help me, but they may ask me for like you know help with unresolved whatever or making the spiritual interaction a more pleasant place. Kind of a werewolf the forsaken situation. Sure, sure, fair enough. And so, and you have ghost eyes, which may, means their initial attitude uh, is going to be neutral. So what I would have yes. you do then, uh, is there anything that you're going to offer uh, in terms of offerings or bargains or uh, supplication uh, to these spirits? Uh, um, or are you just kind of approaching it like, hey, everybody be cool. This uh, is a robbery. I'm I'm approaching it with respect that they live here and we'd like to be good neighbors. So I'm introducing ourselves and saying, you know, there's an open channel of communication. There's no reason that us being here can't be great for you. So I'm, I'm presenting this as a positive uh, opportunity. In that case, what I would uh, suggest is either a leadership persuasion or culture role um, paired with your choice of social attribute. Oh, okay. So I have one dot in any of those, and that's persuasion. And I'll go with either presence or composure. They both have the same dice. Right. So um, give it a shot. Can I can I throw a momentum at this to like bonus it or something? Or yeah, uh, you can spend momentum. You can gain. Uh, let's see what all you can spend momentum for before you roll. If um, everybody's okay with that. Yep. Yeah. Did we gain one for me, like feeding people? Yes. Sweet. So now you should be, I believe you have five in the pool. Uh, so you can add an enhancement to an action on a one for one basis. Uh, you can spend one point of momentum to describe a story element in a scene that is now a fact. Uh, for example, the player may decide the guard outside the rift is your cousin or the villain is your ex-partner. This is subject to story guide approval. Uh, you can also spend a momentum to gain a piece of evidence about an investigation. In fact, I would let you in this circumstance, uh, given the power that you have, I would let you spend a momentum to establish the fact that you have friendly terms with the local nature spirits. I think that's a fair. And they're, they're amenable to that. Right. Yeah. So, I think okay. That's fair. Yeah. They're, as long as you don't do anything to piss them off, you're good. Um, you may have to make some rolls if you're going to ask them for favors or anything, but uh, you have a fairly, like, we don't bother each other, uh, you know, kind of relationship established. I'd let you do that for just the expenditure let us, of momentum. Let us know if there's a thing you need. We're happy to help. We can all be good. Uh, okay. Out of four dice, a five, a nine, nine, and an eight. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I did uh, not expect that. Honestly. Go ahead and make a note uh, as well that you have um, three hits sort of uh, banked for future enhancement for dealing with the local spirits. Sweet. Uh, that may, you want to hang on to that note. You want to make sure you're aware of it. Maybe put it in the, in the uh, discord so you don't lose it. Um, yeah, sure. But Is, uh, would I put that under contacts maybe? Um, or I'll, I'll put it under status effects. I'd say, yeah, I would say put it under status effects. Um, and then you can expend those anytime until they're gone to draw on uh, favors and such from the local spirit population. I like it. Uh, uh, the last thing I would like to do, and I don't know if you're going to even make me roll for this, um, I'm going to pull out what I'm calling a cradle map. I don't know if this is a thing in there. I'm making it up. But sure. when we mentioned three-dimensional maps, mm -hmm. it's uh, I'm picturing like two blocks of wood or stone or something, and you pull it apart, and there's threads tied oh, to that's represent dope. tunnel system. I yeah, love thank that. Thank you. Yeah. just came to me right there. That's super so, cool. So uh, I'm going to update my cradle map with this location, tie a little descriptive bit of parchment or whatever to it, try to figure out where we are in relation to uh, that stuff. In that case, I would like you to give me a your choice of intellect or dexterity that would be paired with your artistry. Interesting. I don't have artistry, but I like it. Um, is there any chance I could use survival as it's like navigation? 
Uh, yes, but I'm going to impose a minor complication on it uh, in that if you don't resolve that minor complication, it will uh, affect the accuracy of the map. It's a one die difference. I feel like the complication is more trouble than just rolling raw. <laughs> okay, plain old intellect then. Can I assist with this? Uh, yeah, particularly if you do have art artistry. I got one artistry. Yeah. Give it a shot. Go ahead and give it, right. give it a roll. So you'll roll first, and then you'll act as enhancement to um, Kelzul's roll. And cool. One success. Um, I'm rolling artistry. Anything else? Artistry uh, it would it would go with either your dexterity or your uh, intellect. Oh, okay. Uh, that's five. Okay. You got two successes. Excellent. So that's a total of three hits with the with the uh, one material that uh, Kelsel rolled. Uh, so you work. Have, so you have what you're fairly certain this is a pretty accurate. Like this, you're you're looking it over and you're like this. All these measurements match up. Uh, makes sense to me. Uh, whilst the others are uh, map making and and uh, all that sort of business, uh, is there anything that Straferia would like to be doing? Are you uh, tilling the land in preparation for planting crop? Are you um, trying to adjust the place to your faith? Is there anything that you'd like to do in those regards? Um, is there any other action that you'd like to take? Or are you uh, focused mainly on, on cooking food and harvesting right now? Um, other than like me? Yeah, I guess I could like start blessing places. Okay. Excellent. Uh, my other goal was to get a deeper connection with everyone, grow stronger bonds. Okay. Um, uh, if you would like to uh, spend time so let's talk about uh, working out stronger bonds with folks first. I, I offered um <laughs> What's your name? Stavo, a, a grub, and it didn't quite pan out, but we were trying to be kind. <laughs> uh, so effectively, okay, so here's how this works. Um, <laughs> Are you taking a pace? <laughs> you actually, what you can do is, um, as long as everybody is agreeable, uh, you can increase your bond by one over the course of just spending a scene socializing with one another. Yeah, um, let's try. You do have a limit to the number of bonds you can have at certain ratings. Uh, you may only ever have one bond at rating five, two at rating four, three at rating three, four at rating two, and you can have as many bonds as you want at rating one. If you spend a scene in interaction with a character that you have no bond with, you can, and it's mutually agreed, you can create a bond of one with them. Uh, so in terms of the uh, Smith and her nieces, uh, you can all establish a bond of one with them, as well as with M. Uh, we oh. haven't established a bond with them yet. No. I haven't. So what yeah, is the Smith's you, name again? Uh, the Smith's name is Althea, I believe. Althea. Let me double check. Athlana. I apologize. A-T-H-L-A-N-A. -A. Yeah, don't let it happen again. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> such a such a common uh, name. Can't believe I messed it up. Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, you can uh, write down that you have loved one bonds with Athlana. Um, um, and Athlana's nieces are named uh, Gelfim, G-E-L-P-H-I-M. And Iradia, I R A E D A. I'm just putting Atlanta and nieces. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, and then you can increase your bonds to one another by a value of one. Okay. Cool. Except uh, for Bunga. Except for Bunga, because Bunga's over in the corner just throwing rocks. It would. Bunga breaks rocks. I'm trying to eat the wall. <laughs> if someone can write that in the Zoom chat for me, as um, I'm having technical difficulties with my character sheet. Sure, you uh, just need to know the character names and bonds? Just the character names, yeah. 
Okay. Was that A T L A N A? A T H L A N A. Athlon. Yep. Cool. I'll um approach the nieces. Sure. Um and I'll just say that um what am I gonna say? Have you guys ever embarked on a quest like this before? No, uh, neither of us has ever left Tulver's Hearth. We're still very young. Um, Geltham is, I guess, of marrying age. But uh, it, this is the furthest we've ever been from Tulver's Hearth. Right. I just want you to know that if you're ever scared or you're ever in doubt, you can come to me and I'll do my best to comfort you. Thank you. That means a lot. Uh, you and your companions have been very kind and very uh, faithful to your promises to uh, our aunt and that will not go uh, without regard from us. Um, yeah. And you might have noticed last battle that I was trying to defend you too. Um, yeah. Absolutely. You, you all have been valiant. You all have been helpful. Uh, I look forward to the next time we can strike out and seek trade because there should be much profit from, uh, from our auntie's forge over the next calm that we can all divide and perhaps turn this into a true prosperous settlement. Yes, but value your lives first, foremost, please. I yep. couldn't bear the thought of someone getting hurt over this. Well, thank you. The only thing we value as much as our lives is that of our companions and the forge. Very good. And then she'll just leave it at that. Excellent. Uh, now, once you've had your initial interactions, done this initial work, you manage to ensure the doors are working. They'll open and close as needed. You can bar them if you must you're able to work together a crude but functional grid over the river uh, to prevent anything from anything too large from making its way in and the changes in pressure the sort of rhythmic, almost instinctual sense begins to creep into each of you as you recognize that the calm is on its way. You close and seal the doors and through the little bit of air above where the river runs through to the uh, entrance and exit of, of the cavern you can hear the distant whistles and in some quiet, quiet moments cries of whatever is making its way through the world below as you enter your calm and that dear friends is where we will end our session for this week congratulations you have survived your first season of adventuring in the world below uh Ooh. we will be uh, this game's awesome <laughs> i'm glad you're loving it i'm having a great time thank you um we will be taking a uh a bye week during our next scheduled session uh nobody's going to be here on the 16th but we will all be able to return i do believe on the 30th uh, where we will address what the settlement does during calm. Uh, it'll be very interesting to 
uh, dive into the, the various systems that are available. There are different calm rituals at your disposal. I would encourage you all, if you have the opportunity between now and next session, to look over the manuscript and see if there's any rituals you particularly want to do during calm. One thing I would uh, definitely like to draw uh, your attention to, Haley, is there's actually like a calm ritual for like consecrating a holy place, like build, uh -huh. like building a temple during calm is one of the things you can do yeah you can do like like it's it's world building level shit you can do with calm with calm actions and calm rituals uh, um, okay yeah so now if i recall correctly um Haley and crow are both uh kind of well lich loyalists right i am i don't think she is i think she's more yeah she is golf on right i'm with the church of golf yeah a... yeah so so whereas uh Savo like directly pursues the well liches as a source of power. Um the Church of Golthon believes that the entirety of the world below is the body of their deity. Right? So you're basically like walking around inside like literally inside your god. <laughs> it's, the, it's the Church of Golthon's belief. So cool. <laughs> So. Uh, but I'm I'm playing uh, Occupy Wells, so um, there's let's let's plan on a little bit of role playing out some uh, uh, philosophical conflict and debate. So oh, yeah. let's be let's be ready for that as a group. Sure, I, I bet think there's that's gonna be fun. I bet there'll be some discussion. Also, as you're sorting out like which of these, you know, actions do we want to take during calm, people's interests are going. Could could very well come into cl into clash, and I don't remember off the top of my head what uh, dogma, if any, uh, Bunga adheres to. Eat rocks. <laughs> Jump the whip bugs. Find out actually yeah. that Bunga's got the most like intellectually driven <laughs> dogma. <that> just <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Ulk, take time for self. Yeah, right, right. What? Like, since we're since we're here, let me write a treatise on my experiences. What the fuck? Dogma <laughs> clean living. He's, his dogma is straight edge. Yeah. He's, uh... <laughs> Anakin AI voice. My thesis. Just just go nuts. Um, yeah, to, man, I'm looking forward to it. I think yep. it's going to be a hoot. So yeah, if you have any questions in the interim, obviously you know where to find me. Uh, hit me up on the Discord. We'll we'll plan it out. I'd like to. Uh, pro we'll probably spend the majority, if not all, of next session like addressing what happens during calm. Um, it is a fairly at this point, it's a very very small settlement. There's only you know there's less than ten of you, um, so uh, things could get very dicey depending on how a couple of die rolls go too. Because of or course very there's, they could also get very there could be twenty of you by the end of the column. Um so <laughs> wait, what do you think I'm at? <laughs> um but yeah, having said that, uh that is where we will uh put a pin in things until next session. Uh so before we wrap up, uh, do we have any questions, comments, complaints, or concerns about the way tonight went? I completed a short-term goal. Oh, excellent. Which was that? Um, gain stronger bonds or more bonds. Oh, excellent. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> you may take an experience for that. Okay. Uh, I completed Speak for the Dead and Shepherd Someone Through Life or Death. Uh, you may take uh, both of those then. Uh, that is two. Uh, did you... Uh, Complete any of your aspirations for Savo? No, and um, that's only because um, in the confusion of trying to get to the sessions, I forgot to put on the new short-term um, short-term aspirations. So I got to do that later. That's fine. Did you uh, repeat your previous ones? Did you like uh, uh, achieve what was listed as the previous one? No. So it's all good. I'm good. Okay. I I think I achieved my long term. What was your long term? Um, avert a uh, avert a uh, bad luck fate for an individual or community. Um, I think I did that for Athlana. Yeah, I would say that's probably fair to say. Yeah, because it, it was going to be 
Um, she was in for some shit had you not yeah. uh, intervened, and now you have at least put her in a, into a stable place for this calm. Awesome. Um, uh, what's a long term worth? Uh, the long term is two. Killer. Uh, so, and then of course you all get one for attending, and uh, you. Did not spend half the momentum pool on a single scene this time. Um, but yeah, you did. It was all one long scene. And you spent at least two momentum. So let me take one point for that. Yeah. And, and you have reached uh, a story milestone. You have uh, come to the end of your first... Or you've entered your first column phase. So you may um, gain one more experience for that. Uh, one thing you may choose to do... Uh, at the beginning of Calm, you may spend experience. I'll let you do it at the start. Uh, okay. The experience Give table to over. is on page 131 of the manuscript. I do believe. Yes. Uh, and then at the end of Calm, you will all be able to advance uh, a path. This doesn't cost any experience. Uh, it does, however, give you certain benefits which you will note um also they're on page uh, 132 so if you advance your dawn you get uh an additional momentum generator um a new dot one dot bond within the party or add a dot to an existing bond uh you can spread dots among your dawn skills uh take two dots of thesis for what you meet meet the prerequisites uh, unless your dawn is a major path and you take three instead of two and you can add a new uh, one dot or tag to a contact related to the dawn uh, if you advance the dialectic it's three dots among your dialectic skills two dots of synthesis for which you meet the prerequisites or three if it's a major path and then uh, dot to your or tag to your contact and then callings are three dots among your calling skills, two dots of sorceries, or three dots if it's, if you're, uh, it's your major path, and then a dot to contact. So that's just an automatic, at the end of your column, you choose which path you want to advance. Bang. You can Very go. story path. Yep. And you can, uh, you can hold on to your experience. Uh, you just can only spend it during column. So if you're like, I want to bank XP, you absolutely can do so. You just won't be able to spend it again until the next column. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Is yeah. there a mechanic where you bank XP so that it goes to your next character when they inevitably get torn apart in caves? I don't know that that's specifically uh, listed in the current document, but I I do believe that uh, Ed Greenwood's monstrous ecology might have more rules on generational play. I could be, I could be. Talking outside of my mouth, that might be a different book. But what I, I know one of the uh, one of the forthcoming supplements will be dealing with uh, more information on generational play. I personally okay. would have no objection to it. I'm, um, I, I see so much potential in this. Consider <laughs> consider that cradle map idea. Me throwing my hat in the ring. Please let me know when the next book is happening. I'd love a piece of that. Uh, the I second, have so many the, ideas. The, the, uh, same. Uh, <laughs> I, I definitely want to work on the next thing there. I, I, for I, it. I love you, this man. fucking setting um, yeah, really so cool. much. It's really cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm super proud of, of having the opportunity to have been involved at all with it. Um, and I look forward to, to more stuff, but yeah, I love that idea the cradle map. That's dope. Um, Thanks. And we can also even discuss at the next session, like, do we want to investigate generational play? Do we want to do like one or two more s seasons with these characters and then start looking into building out this settlement where do we want to focus after after this calm uh those are all things we can discuss too uh you know because that is an option it may go from being the story of these adventurers helping uh you know a uh humble blacksmith move their forge uh to how this settlement got built <laughs> you know <laughs> like there there are a lot of ways to tackle it so God, I feel like I just had that men in black moment where you zoom out and it turns out it's like a marble. That's just right. Oh, hey, okay. Um, 
Well, on that bright and shiny, we will uh, button things up for the evening. So uh, once again, I would like to thank uh, all of you who are watching, whether it be live or in VOD. I would like to remind you to pretty please with sugar on top if you've not yet done so. Uh, head over to our link tree. And in the link tree at the very, very top, you will see a link to uh, sign up for the At The Gates backer kit. It starts on May 7th, I believe, but if you sign up at that link, you will get a notification right away when the backer kit goes live, so you can get in uh, on the ground floor of supporting At The Gates. It's the next game in the Earthbane cycle. It is a you know a Japanese RPG uh, video game inspired uh, setting. Uh, it's epic fantasy, uh, you know, animal people and and you know materia and all sorts of fun stuff happening. Uh, so go definitely check that out if you like Chrono Trigger. If you like Final Fantasy, any games along those lines, definitely want to keep your eyes on at the gates and uh, look for connections to the world below. You'll find them even in some of the promo material already if you if you look hard. Um, speaking of Chrono Trigger, if you come here on Tuesdays at least for the duration of the uh, Backer Kit campaign. Uh, Danielle, uh, the developer for At The Gates, is going to be playing uh, Chrono Trigger on the channel and answering customer questions about uh, about At The Gates. So if you if you think the setting sounds cool, uh, pop in Tuesdays, 5 p.m. Eastern, and ask Dee all your questions about At The Gates while she plays some Chrono Trigger. Um, it's really cool. Yeah, it's going to be... It's been fun so far. We've already done three episodes. Those will be up on YouTube next week. Um, but... Uh, yeah, uh, pop in and, and check it out uh, and, and get some get some knowledge about At The Gates, but definitely go back it. Also, uh, if you've not yet done so for some reason and you have yet to uh, pre-order The World Below over on Backer Kit, don't wait. Get that pre-order in. Uh, you know, we, we, we love to see it. You would love to see it. You'll get the manuscripts and you can see all the wild stuff that we're talking about on this game and all the wild stuff that we're not. Uh, I cannot stress enough to you how very little we have uh, bumped against the surface of this setting. We have, I wouldn't even say we've scratched it. <laughs> we, have, we, have, we have, we've just hit the, the very tip of this iceberg. And uh, as you can tell, it's a complicated, well, not complicated, but a complex, um, rich, well-developed world that has all sorts of different genres of play available in it. Um, definitely uh, check out the manuscript. Uh, you can get that by uh, pre-ordering over at Backer Kit at the link I just threw in the chat. Uh, I have been Travis, uh, I pronounce he they. It's been my honor and pleasure to be your story guide on this adventure. Uh, let's go ahead and have everybody else say their goodbyes and do their outros, and we'll go in reverse order this time. Kevin, if you could, please tell us who you are, what you do, who you're playing, your pronouns, their pronouns, and anything you would like to promote. I have been and continue to be Kevin R. Zarnicki, voice actor, game designer, teacher, and a few other things that we won't mention here. Uh, he, him, I've been playing Kale Zul, he, him, necromancer, speaker for the dead, and overall Occupy Wells. Um, aside from that, um, I'd like to throw a shout out to BJ Hensley for getting that job at Paizo. Well freaking done you. That is super cool. You rock. Love to see the success in the community. Beyond that, hit me up at kevin.r.zarnicki at gmail.com and mention the world below, and I'll give you the indie rates rather than uh, for the pro services. Like, let's let's get your career started, for real. Not just, here's some education, good luck. Let me hold your hand until you sign the contract, and even then we'll stay in touch. Um, aside from that, Keep an eye open for Voltron coming. I don't know when, because I'm not at that level in the company. Um, <laughs> and uh, yes, I, I please back this game because I'm looking at the manuscript for dangers of the world below. I can't tell you how cool these enemies are and how much I want to play half of them. They're pretty, they're pretty dope. They're, they're, oh. there's, Michaela did an amazing job on the antagonist chapter. It's, Please it's tell me really there's going to be detailed art of all of these things. I I, I would want to. I would be very surprised if there wasn't. Um, yeah, I, I would be very surprised if there wasn't. And you can see some of uh, if you check out the the backer kit link, you can see some of the uh, critters in art right there. That is so. That's me. Thank you so much. <laughs> love it every time. You thank, guys rock. Thank you for being here. We uh, love having you around. Uh, speaking of people we love having around, Haley, your pertinence, please. Me. Okay. <laughs> My name's Haley, uh, also known as babe underscore blade 666 on Instagram. Um, yeah, 
I don't really have much going on. Just casual kind of girl. And uh, I like being here every other week, though. It's really fun. We love and I'm also here. excited to see what else we can do within the world uh, below. So, yeah, thanks for having me. Thank, thank you for being here. We we'll look forward to having you here again in about uh, four weeks from tonight. Uh, and last but never least, uh, Crow, your pertinence, please. Hi. I've been playing uh, Savo. Uh, I can't wait for whatever it is that we decide to do during this calm or in, and also the future of this game. Um, it's been fun. I have nothing going on currently. I've just been on like a hiatus um until i decide what to do next um but i do love playing with the onyx path crew and hopefully play with some other crews i've been meeting who have been very nice and very calm so that has just been awesome oh. um i am working on something in some things so even in my downtown i'm still working um but yeah that's that's me that's all i got rack and roll well hopefully you know you never know when we return on the 30th Oh, we might all have a uh, bigger announcement. Who knows? I might even have something to do announce by then. We'll see. Ooh. You never know. Uh, so make sure that you mark your calendars. Come back here on the 30th. Uh, we'll be going live at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, our normal start time. And we will delve into the next phase of the world below. Till then, take care of yourselves and each other. Uh, wash your hands. Get your shots. All that good stuff. And hang out. I'm going to send us over to Dork Tales on a Raid. Uh, show them some love when you get there. Uh, see you real soon. Bye. Bye.